Although dinosaurs are very popular, the contemporary Mesozoic crocodilians and their relatives, the crocodiliomorphs, remain obscure to the general public. Despite their former diversity in both size and shapes, the few relatively mainstream species, such as Dinosuchus, were more or less simply larger versions of today's crocodilians. The sole exception to this is the bizarre Caprosuchus saharriscus. Its name means Saharan boar crocodile, which is in reference to its massive, almost tusk-like teeth. The striking appearance has inspired the boar croc's inclusion in various media, such as the video game Ark Survival Evolved, as well as a shockingly inaccurate portrayal in the series Primeval. Caprosuchus is often depicted as a terrestrial animal. While there were a number of fully terrestrial crocodiliomorphs throughout prehistory, whether or not Caprosuchus was among their number is still under debate. Despite its fame, very little is known about Caprosuchus. Only a single skull has been found, and remarkably little research relating to it has been conducted since the initial description in 2009. The skull was found in the Ekhar Formation in Niger, which was formed between 100 to 95 million years ago. This means Caprosuchus lived at roughly the same time as the famous dinosaurs Carcharodontosaurus and Spinosaurus. Caprosuchus was originally estimated to have been 6 meters long. More recent estimates of its size, based on its close relative, Mahajungasuchus, suggest a more modest length closer to 3 meters, which is still impressive for a non-dinosaur at the time. Caprosuchus had powerful jaws, and its skull was reinforced to withstand the power created by its own devastating bite. Its skull was long, wide, and flat much like those of today's crocodilians. The boar croc had a total of three pairs of very large teeth, with the pair on the bottom being responsible for its boar-like appearance. Compared to crocodilian teeth, these were not only larger, but straighter and sharper. Caprosuchus also had smaller teeth, a few of which were still noticeably larger than the rest. One pair even looks like a second, smaller set of tusk. All of the teeth are compressed on one side, with the smooth side facing where the tongue would have been. Although Caprosuchus' teeth are its most famous feature, they are far from its only strange trait. Its skull also has a pair of horn-like structures, which are formed from its squamosal and periental bones. Some modern crocodilians also have smaller horns formed from the squamosal bone, which the extinct crocodile Voe robustus took to an extreme. Unlike these species, the boar croc's horns face the front rather than the side. In life, they may have been covered in keratin, making them even larger. While Caprosuchus's snout is long and flat, like most crocodilians, the end of its snout is elevated. The bone is also heavily vascularized and has a wrinkled texture. All of these traits suggest that Caprosuchus's snout ended in a keratin shield. In the paper it was named in, it was hypothesized that the boar croc used this keratin shield to ram into its prey to stun them. Another possible use of this armored snout was as a weapon in contest between rivals. It may have instead been used to support some sort of display structure to attract mates, perhaps in conjunction with its horns. While Caprosuchus is only known from its skull, during the initial description, the authors, including the famous paleontologist Dr. Paul Serrano, considered it to have been a terrestrial animal. Ever since, this has been the most common way it has been portrayed. The evidence cited for a landbound boar croc include its orbits. Crocodilian eyes are positioned so they can see their prey while keeping most of their bodies underwater. 
Caprosuchus's eyes were instead directed more towards the side, which would have made it difficult to both keep a low profile and to see prey approaching from the shore. Its horns would have also poked out of the water. In contrast, the horns of Voe face the sides, making them less noticeable than Caprosuchus's horns, and even it is also suspected to have spent a lot more time on land than most crocodilians do to its robust limbs. The elevated snout would have also risked giving the boar croc away in the water. Of course, Today's male gharials have nasal bosses on the same part of their snouts, which are even more noticeable, but they primarily hunt fish rather than ambushing terrestrial prey. Additionally, assuming it was a tool for hunting, the boar croc's ram-like snout would have been a lot more effective on land than in the water. Finally, Caprosuchus has been argued to have been primarily terrestrial because its teeth, large and small, differ substantially from the subconical teeth of crocodilians. However, as some of the art in this video implies, there are also arguments in favor of an amphibious Caprosuchus. Despite the differences between the skulls of modern crocodilians and the boar croc, they still had many features in common. Like crocodilians and most other semi-aquatic crocodiliomorphs, Caprosuchus's skull is flat, which would have reduced the drag it produced while in the water. In contrast, the skulls of most land crocs were generally deep. If the boar croc wasn't aquatic, it at least seems to have had a recent ancestor who was. Also unlike most terrestrial crocodiliomorphs, but like crocodilians, Caprosuchus's nostrils were on the top of its snout. Modern crocodilians use their similar nostrils to breathe while keeping most of their bodies submerged. On the other hand, it has been argued that Caprosuchus's crocodile-like nostrils were instead a consequence of it evolving its ram-like snout. Furthermore, while Caprosuchus's teeth are different from those of amphibious crocodiles, they are also different from the teeth of most predatory land crocs. Their teeth were usually xiphodont, meaning they are laterally compressed, recurved, and serrated. Therefore, the boar croc's teeth lack an apparent ecological equivalent. Due to the mixed signals present in its skull, Caprosuchus may have been semi-terrestrial, spending more time on land than most other crocodilians, but still spending a substantial amount of time in the water. Another possibility is that Caprosuchus did spend most of its time in the water, but... Unlike most other semi-aquatic crocodiliomorphs, it didn't live as a crocodile analog. Until postcranial Caprosuchus skeleton is found, how much time the boar croc spent on land remains speculation. When Caprosuchus was first found, it was thought to be a member of Neosuchia. This is the same branch of crocodiliomorpha as crocodilians. Like them, most other Neosuchians were amphibious, although some Neosuchians, like the Planeocranids, did revert to a fully terrestrial existence. While this would still seemingly make an amphibious boar croc the default assumption, Caprosuchus is now placed as part of the clade Notosuchia. Most Notosuchians were fully terrestrial, which would seemingly make a terrestrial Caprosuchus the default assumption. However, Caprosuchus's closest relative was Mahajungasuchus, who was ironically semi-aquatic, if still more competent on land than crocodilians. Furthermore, they belonged to a clade within Notosuchia which included other species who had also become semi-aquatic independently of the Neosuchians. On the other hand, the relationships within this branch are poorly resolved, and some of them, like Uberabasuchus, were fully terrestrial. Even Mahajungasuchus lived 66 million years ago in Madagascar, about 30 million years after Caprosuchus. For context, 
In the same span of time, the Tyrannosaurids evolved from small predators to the gigantic Tyrannosaurus rex. Therefore, the Boarcroc still lacks any particularly close relatives, which makes this perplexing crocodiliomorph all the more mysterious. Overall, whether it spent more time on land or in the water, Caprosuchus was one of the strangest reptiles to ever evolve. Not only were its teeth unlike anything else in Crocodiliomorpha, but it also had horns and possibly even an armored snout reinforced for ramming. Hopefully, a complete skeleton of the Boarcroc will be discovered soon, so many of the mysteries surrounding it can be solved. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something interesting. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to hit the like button and subscribe if you'd like to see more. Finally, be sure to have a great day.